What's going on everybody? I want to talk to you today about X-Wing 2.0 and what we're still waiting on. I think there's a lot of things that we could say that we're waiting on, so I wanted to bring you a list of things that I am particularly waiting on and uh, you know, see what you guys think. Uh, I also want to remind everybody that there is still another round of the giveaway going on right now, so if you'd like to enter to win an expansion of your choice in the form of a Cool Stuff gift card for $25, all you have to do is become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. I'll announce the winner at the end of one of my videos next week. So stay tuned for that. There is also a new giveaway starting right now on Patreon. I'm actually giving away a full set of Bounty Hunter ship promo cards from Gen Con. Uh, this full set is going out to one lucky patron. I'll post that over on my Patreon below. And the higher your pledge tier, the more entries you'll get into that as well. So make sure you uh, check that out if you are on Patreon. I want a big thanks to all of my patrons as well. You guys help make this possible. So. Uh, big thanks to you guys. So let's talk about X-Wing 2.0. It's been over two months, almost three months now, since Gen Con. And, uh, you know, we really don't have a whole lot of new information. And I think we've kind of, at the rate of all the new stuff that's kind of coming out for X-Wing, there's so much stuff. There's seven factions, you know, planned. We have had X-Wing 2.0 officially come out with only three that we have in hand. So there's, there's more that hasn't been released than is released. So... With that in mind, you kind of expected a whole lot more uh, to kind of be announced already. And and it's just there's just so much that I think is still we're still waiting on. Now, these are in no particular order. So the first isn't necessarily the least or most uh, on this list. It's just a list. So I'm going to talk about things that we're kind of waiting on, that I, at least that I have been waiting on. First off, ep Epic. They've said that they're going to do something with Epic, that there's we have to be patient. There's been no news or even hints of anything related to Epic Play. And I think, you know, there's a couple of ways they could do this. One way, they could just simply re-release all the same stuff that we currently have for Epic with maybe a revised rule set. Although I don't know if they want to revise it too much because of the fact that I don't think Epic sees that much play. Although there is a huge market for it. There's a lot of people that still enjoy the models and enjoy the extra cards you get in them. Although because they're doing less buying across the aisle, I have the feeling that whatever they release for Epic is only going to have stuff that's useful in Epic Play. I don't think you're going to have to buy, you know, a Raider to get a crew card that'll go on a non-Epic ship. So I think Epic cards are going to be Epic only. That's my prediction just based on how they're not forcing you to buy across the aisle i think they're going to have people who are buying epic and they want to see who really wants to buy epic now there may be some cosmetic stuff like maybe you'll get a reskinned um you know a re or a repainted x-wing or something like that but i don't think you'll get anything exclusive like it may not come with any extra pilots that's possible but we'll see um so that would be very interesting Actually, another thing they could do if they want to sweeten the pot a little bit for Epic players is put other cosmetic in things in there, maybe acrylic tokens uh, or acrylic movement templates um, that say X-Wing Epic on them and they're all fancy. Or maybe a, you know alternate dice. I mean, the same size but different colored dice, kind of how they do um, for prize support. Problem is that might influence on the way that they do prize support, so I don't think they'll do that. Uh, but what direction are they going to take with Epic? Um, I, you know... I've long wanted bigger ships. I love big, big, huge ships because I think they're beautiful to put on display. Um, I would have them all behind me right now except it's too hot, so that's why I'm indoors. I usually go out in the garage when I have all of my stuff, and so that's, uh, you know, I have it all behind me. But I'm, I'm all down for a Nebulon or an Architans or any of these bigger ships, and I think they could do that. But I think another thing that they might do is they might explore other epic options for other factions. Scum is still short a Corvette. All right, and then they have all these other factions. They have four more factions they need to come up with capital ships for. And that's going to be kind of interesting. We do, you know, we do know that some things could potentially carry over. Like if they did an Architans, they could also do that in theory for the Republic. If they did certain, you know, Rebellion ships may also be in use by the Resistance, like a CR-90, for example. You could get a lot of those things that could carry over. However, I, I, I just don't know if they're going to really want to develop a minimum of two epic ships for seven factions. You're looking at 14 epic ships now, unless and if they're not going to reuse some assets. So I think if they're going to do epic for every faction, it may not be perfectly symmetrical. I don't think everybody's just going to get one, you know, a one point and a two point, um, or you know, or, or a three point ship. 
Now we do have, at least in one point now, we have up to five epic points. So it does stand to reason that they could have larger ships that could cost all five epic points and, uh, you know, and kind of give some more depth to epic play. I just don't really see them doing that. Uh, if they do revise the epic rule set, I think they're going to have to make it a little quicker and more fun to play and maybe encourage people into a more casual, friendly, really, really fun quicker game because a lot of the epic games took a long time so maybe that's something that they'll address um that's also a problem people have for armadas that the games can sometimes take too long so i think any way you can potentially speed up gameplay without taking away the fun i think it's probably a good idea what's something else uh that i uh, that that i'm expecting well considering this one this one you guys might not agree with this next one is is a personal thing that I would like to see, especially after being at Gen Con and seeing all the Legion playmats they had. There are ones that they had printed in house, and it just reminds me they can print playmats in house. I'd like to see Epic playmats. Um, you know, they, they teased this Superstar Destroyer under construction artwork the other day uh, on their Instagram, and some people brought up this would make an amazing Epic playmat. Uh, it was brought up under the subtext of Armada, but I think this would also work very, very well for X-Wing. Uh, for you guys who are interested in playing X-Wing, would you play or would you buy a playmat like a you know a six by four? I'm sorry, a six by three paint or maybe six by four? Um, would you buy a, a playmat like this if FFG was printing them in house? I I certainly would. I would absolutely buy a playmat like this. I think it's gorgeous, uh, and I would. I wish they would do that. Now I know you can take if you get the high enough resolution files, you can have somebody print it. You know, but because this is going to be, you know, uh, it's it's got intellectual property on it. It's a lot easier just to do basic, you know, generic space fields and nebula and nebulas and planets in the background, uh, as opposed to trying to do something that's, uh, you know, another artist's stuff and it gets into legal ease. So. Yes, that's uh, so. I would like to see more playmats, especially the epic playmats. Considering you know, or six by three playmats, or even two three by threes, if they did them in, as a as a bundle, I, I'd be okay with that too. Although I kind of prefer the six by three because sometimes with the two three by threes, they get they get kind of get off center. Next up, accessory packs. So you remember they did these color bases a while back for X Wing. Well, I think they need to bring these back under X-Wing 2.0. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't have an objection if they wanted to introduce some different colors also, but I think you need to bring back the same colors at least uh, that you had already to continue to support those same colors. But we need other things. We need medium bases now, for example. I've got more ships than I have medium bases, and I want to be able to, you know, have them all set up. <laughs> so that's me. I, I, I have them all set up behind me in the garage when I do videos out there. But... I, you know, I, I want more medium bases and I want to be able to buy colored bases to match other stuff. If I want to do a full squad of all green based ships, I can't use any mediums because there are no greens. Now granted, I know some people can paint their own and will do that stuff, but not everybody wants to do that. And I think it'd be great if they did accessory packs for 2.0, considering there's a lot of new uh, components. Another thing that they could do, and if they're going to increase the line of accessories packs, is they could also go ahead and put fixes for things that, that kind of need them, like the ghost uh, not having that turret. Now, that is in the rules that it says you just use a small one and just place it where, where it needs to go. But if they're doing an accessory pack, they could do some, some nicer turret art, you know, just do a full turret pack so you can get acrylic turrets that maybe are a little bit bigger and won't you know, interfere with people trying to put their markers in there because it's a real pain in the butt when you're trying to stick your little your little target lock number thing in there, but you also have the turret and it barely wants to sit in there. And then every time you move your little turret and knocks it out, you know, have a better a better solution for that. This is a great way for them to do that. Again, the, at the same time, though, some people might complain and say, "Oh, well, you know, you made a broken product and now you're charging me extra to fix the broken product." I guess, but I just would like to see a solution. Plus, I like the color options it's just is a nice it's a nice little touch so um that would be nice next up uh, you know they give they teased clone wars back at um before gen con even although it didn't come out until after gen con but we still haven't gotten a proper clone wars article on x-wing and uh, we know that you know i did a video called first look uh, you know uh, way back when when the star wars show first revealed uh these two ships the scimitar and the jedi uh, the edda 2 no it's not an edda 2 that's the delta 7 i'm sorry um but yeah when they when they revealed these two these first two ships from the clone wars we're like okay great so are we gonna get 
an official article now. We've got nothing on the Clone Wars. We've got nothing for a while. And I and I understand you need to get the resistance and stuff out there first before you start, you know, jumping too far ahead. But boy, there's a lot of stuff in the pipe right now. And it would have been nice to get an official first look. Uh, and maybe this is going to be coming soon, you know? Maybe it'll drop today. Maybe it'll drop right as you're watching this video. Who knows? But I would love to see it. I'd love to see more of what they're planning to do. Are they going to reuse the ARC-170? I would imagine they do. You know, maybe the ARC-170 gets a new paint job on for the... You know, I would expect it to, that, that to happen as well. Um, is it going to be a dual faction pack? Could some of these ships be dual faction packs? I think that's a great idea. Because you get an ARC-170 that has both Rebel and Republic pilots. You know cool let's do it you know let's let's do it um but yeah i would like to see more about the clone wars especially about these two ships i want to see more all about it i want to see darth maul i want to see what he looks like what does he do what does the scimitar do uh, very exciting I, i'm expecting it will cloak because it cloaks in battlefront so there you go and what else we need to talk about the resistance in the first order specifically the first order we they have given us a little bit of previews on the Resistance and First Order, but not a whole lot of new information. They've spoiled a few cards, but not a whole lot of real new information. Like, we knew that the, the, the AR RZ-2A wing was coming, right? We knew that they were going to do that Mining Guild's tie at the, in the same wave, which is strange, because there was no new First Order ship. Like, the First Order's kind of needs another ship. Um, it needs something new. Now, we do have that new TIE Interceptor that's in, uh, you know, Star Wars Resistance, so they're like, okay, are we going to get, you know, a, a, a new ship for the, the First Order? Or is the First Order just going to be four ships, you know? I'm sure they eventually will, but now that one is officially in canon and spoiled, it's a great time to go ahead and, and, and showcase it. So, we'd like to see some more, you know, actual future coming expansions for our new sequel trilogy factions. Um, there's a lot more, arguably, that you could do for the for the Resistance. You know, that, that modified B-Wing uh, Resistance shuttle, that Resistance transport that you saw in Episode 7. You could do that. Uh, there's also supposed to be updated versions of, like, B-Wings, and there's a couple other stuff. There's a lot of things that have been shown for people who are in uh, who read the comics as well. I think the Poe Dameron comic had some new things in it as well that were recanonized. So, um Pretty cool stuff in there, but I would like to see more, you know, out, out of the uh, First Order and uh, also the Resistance, but primarily the First Order because we got really no new First Order expansions. If you just got the conversion kit, you got got everything. All right, so that's uh, that's my list, guys. So let me know what are you expecting to see. Is there something that I didn't cover? Do you are you more eager to see all new Rebel ships, which are Rebels, you know, like for or Rebels or Scum or Empire, which are arguably already have a lot. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of new Rebel, Empire, and Scum ships for a while. I think those will probably wait um, until we get more of the Resistance and First Order and then the Clone Wars too. But I, I, I know we will get more eventually. I just, it may be a little while. Maybe a little while. Fortunately, those, those, you know, those factions are flushed out pretty good. And we will get new pilots for those factions as the uh, existing ships are re-released. You know, like the A-Wing comes out, I bet you we're going to get a Tycho Selchu in there. And so on and so forth. Um, I can't wait to see what they do with the B-Wing. I'm really excited to see redesigned existing ships also. I guess I probably could have put that on the list. But I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about and what you guys have to say about it. And because I forgot to start the video with it, I'll go ahead and toss in a hello there. Because I always do. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to check out crowdbox.com. You can hop in my Discord. Uh, don't forget to click that bell for alerts and enter to win the giveaway. Stay tuned. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.